It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Moorhead, Moorhead State Associate Head Volleyball Coach and Head Beach Volleyball Coach, Kristen McBride. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get involved in college coaching on the volleyball side and beach volleyball side? I actually was not sure that I wanted to get into college coaching. My undergrad is a math degree in secondary ed. So initially, I was looking at being a graduate assistant to potentially experience college coaching, but honestly get my master's paid for. And I thought maybe I'll go teach and they'll let me coach a varsity team if I can have some college experience. I'm um, actually on my interview uh, coach gordon asked me how do you know that you want to do this and i i don't i don't know that i can say i want to do something that i've never done before but once i got into coaching in college specifically it's the both it's the best of both worlds when it comes to education and volleyball um and you just get to build such different relationships with young women in college compared to high school and those relationships are what make the whole process really special. What was your playing time like at St. Francisco? Uh, We had a pretty solid team. I think we were probably top two in the conference almost every year, Uh, but it was a really good time. It's a small school and we had a small staff that was very player motivated when it came to doing things. And I think that helped us learn a lot. We had a couple people that coach clubs So I coached club for three years while I played also. Um, And I think that was really good to get a full understanding of the game and not necessarily just what my specific position was. What were some of your college accomplishments during your college playing time? Uh, I think I got all conference a couple times. I know academically I got some awards. um, But honestly, the biggest accomplishment I think is that we really enjoyed playing together and I still talk with some of my teammates. So I always think when our players leave, the biggest accomplishment is if they uh, continue to talk with their teammates, which they do. And so I'm going to say that was one of my biggest ones. What was it like, obviously, going into college coaching and getting your first job at Moorhead State straight out of college? Uh, when I started at Moorhead State, I was actually younger than one of our players because she is a fifth year senior. She had me beat by a month, but it was a great experience. When I started, I was a director of operations, so not technically allowed to coach. And that was a great experience because I couldn't speak specifically to our athletes about technique or coaching or anything like that. And so I would just ask the staff that we had a lot of questions. And I love to ask questions and to learn So it was really this great environment. And then after about six months, it changed and I became our second assistant. Um, And it was really fun. It was challenging being so close in age. Um, It's fun to look back now and think of all the things that I've learned, but it was this incredible experience. I played NAIA volleyball. And so NCAA division one, we go to the NCAA tournament for the first time in school history. I think we only lost maybe three games. It's great. What was it like, obviously, as the director of operations? What was your roles like that? So a lot of travel, helping with academics, um, kind of the background of recruiting. So getting everything ready when the coaches went out um, and then taking care of some things after they get back. But it was a fun role because you get to travel. You're still on staff. And honestly, I think it was the best option because I wasn't ready three months after college to come in and coach a division one championship level NCAA tournament level team. Um, So I just got to learn a lot. And I think that was the best part of it. 
What was it like in 2013, obviously becoming the recruitment coordinator? That it's great to recruit in Kentucky. Uh, we are very blessed. There is an incredible amount of talent in state and then even within three or four hours. So it, it's been really fun. I love building those relationships, obviously recruiting. Some of the rules have changed. So we talk to people a little bit later in high school now. Um, but it's so much fun. And my, again, my undergrad was to be a high school teacher. And so talking to high school female student athletes is pretty easy for me. So, um, but it's been really fun. Even people who we've built relationships and maybe it didn't work out to see them go through. And one of the really cool parts of when we beat Creighton in the NCAA tournament in the spring is we had people who we had recruited six, seven years ago, reach out and their families say, we're so, we love your program. We're so happy for you guys. And I think that, I mean, they didn't even come here and, and people are still reaching out. So I just think it's, it's, we have something really special here. It's special to us. It's not special to everybody and that's fine. Um, but it makes being the recruiting coordinator a lot easier. What was it like in 2011 and 2013 going to the NCAA tournament? Honestly, in 2011, I was just happy for everybody else. I, I kind of walked into it, and uh, it was a team that had been to the conference championship a couple years in a row and not been able to do it. So when it happened in 11, I was just honestly happy for everybody who had put so many years of work in. And then 13 was really special because of how it happened. Um, so our starting setter throughout the entire season – actually got concussed in the last game of regular season played through didn't know she was concussed um so we go into our conference tournament you have to win three straight with a freshman setter running the show and it was so special because every player on that team looked at her her name is bailey nickel and was like bailey you have this we have total faith in you and so we made it to the NCAA tournament by winning three straight games as a freshman setter. It was awesome. What was it like in 2018 and 2019 going back to back and having a 20 win season? I think that again is special because we had a really young group that was building towards something. And so in 2017, uh, we had a really great pre-conference, but struggled a little bit when we got to conference and we had this group that just kept building and taking these steps forward. And so for them to find that success, again, just so happy for them because of all the hard work our players put in so much hard work and so much dedication and those things only happen with them. So most of the time when stuff like that happens, I'm just happy for our players. How did it feel personally for you to obviously become the head coach of the beach volleyball team in 2020? 2020 what a year um <laughs> it was it was great I think our beach only players are incredible humans and then our indoor players cross over to beach and so it was really fun to kind of take this piece and start to mold it and um lead them I think beach volleyball is such a great sport it gives so many more opportunities, and it's so great for indoor players to cross over. Um, we are excited to get, like, a full spring this year, hopefully. 2020 got cut short, and then last year it was really condensed because indoor and beach were in the same season. So I think our beach season was maybe 21 days last year. Um, so we're excited to go through a full spring. Uh, I haven't done that as a head coach really yet, so – Looking forward to that. Can you talk about, of course, what it's like balancing, obviously, being an associate head indoor coach and also a head beach volleyball coach? Yeah, it is awesome. We have very uh, flexible and understanding players when it needs to happen. But for the most part, uh, Sarah, our other staff member, and I will probably run two practices a day, three or four days a week. So we'll go beach in the morning in the fall, and then indoor tends to be in the afternoon. Um, we make sure to make accommodations when we're traveling for indoor. It 
can be challenging, but because our beach only players are so great, it's, it's awesome. I mean, you get to start your day when it's 70 degrees outside in the fall in Kentucky, it's beautiful. And then you get to end your day inside in the gym. So uh, there are definitely challenges, but there's a lot of perks to it. Is it like obviously having those players that you coached on the indoor team come over to the beach volleyball team? I love it because we get to see them in another light. Um, with beach, once you're on the lineup, there's no stubbing out. You're either going to finish the game or you're going to forfeit it. And so in indoor, a lot of our players will maybe play through rotations and rotate out. But in beach, it's you and your partner and that's what you have you get one time out and so I think it's great to see them problem solve a lot again indoor you can talk to them all the time beach you can only talk to them on side switches so every seven points um, and so I we've gotten to a point where we've had beach long enough that everybody understands but it's been great to see them have to problem solve a little bit more who are some of the teams that you play on both the indoor side and the beach side so we play in the Ohio Valley Conference for both. OVC does have beach. Um, so for indoor, we will play obviously the OVC and then our non-conference this past year, we played Pittsburgh, we played Tennessee, we played uh, Pepperdine, Georgia. And so we have a lot of options there. And then on the beach side, we have the OVC as well. In terms of that, we've got Austin P, Eastern Illinois, UT Martin, and then Chattanooga is in there also but you can go play anybody. So this year we're going down to College of Charleston. Um, we've gone to Florida. And then the other difference is for beach, you can go non-divisional. So we could play a division two team and it still counts the same. Whereas indoor, we just play division one. What's it like obviously on the indoor side playing teams like Tennessee, Georgia? It's a lot of fun. They're very <laughs> physical. You have to be on top of your game. But it's a great challenge. Um, I think one of the anchors of our team is our ball control. And yeah, their attackers might be hitting it from a slightly different level, but our ball control is incredibly strong and we can be in system. And at the end of the day, serve pass is really important. And so it's a great challenge for our team to go up against those opponents because that's exactly who we'll see in the NCAA tournament. Was it like obviously on the beach volleyball t side, obviously playing your in in ri in rivals and also your non rival games like UCLA? Uh, so playing in the OVC has been great because you know you're competing for a championship. So last year when we were playing, it wasn't we're just playing games to play them. Um, we were competing for a championship, and it's great we won the first ever OVC regular season championship so those are really fun because there's also some history from the indoor side so for a lot of our team they just saw them a couple months ago maybe they beat us maybe we beat them and they're trying to um, get that back but that's really fun and then from the non-conference side we'll just play some different teams specifically because of location so we haven't played College of Charleston, I don't think, indoor since I've been here, but that's going to be a great experience for our beach team because of where they're located. We get to play by the water. It's a fun trip. Um, so it's just a little bit of a variation in who we play and where we get to go. What does the recruitment process look like for prospective student athletes looking to play both indoor and beach volleyball? It's a little bit different for each one. For indoor, we pay attention a lot to the club scene. We go recruiting a lot. Uh, for beach, we are incredibly fortunate. Not a lot of people recognize that there are really good players in Ohio and Kentucky and in the Midwest. Everybody thinks we have to go south. We do have a Florida player, but we also have two beach only players from Ohio. So we stay pretty regional in terms of where we're recruiting from. Um, and in terms of their recruitment process, I think everybody's is a little bit different. Um, and so sometimes it'll be somebody we've seen since they were 14, or sometimes it'll be someone that we find late in the game and they just fit correctly. What does the official visit look like for prospective student athletes going on 
the official visit for both indoor and beach? Again, it's kind of different per person. I think we're pretty big about making things important for the recruit because it's their process. It's not our process. So every visit looks different, who we meet with. Obviously, we'll go on campus. We'll see our academic facilities. We're incredibly lucky that we have an athlete-only academic facility, which is really important to both of our teams. Um, but it's kind of customized per person because everybody has different interests. What advice would you have prospective student athletes looking to go into indoor volleyball and beach volleyball? I think for people that want to play both, it's important to get some experience in both, but not necessarily constantly train at both. Um, I think it's very helpful, but it can also be overwhelming. And once you have a good understanding of one of the sports, just don't be scared to cross over. I think the biggest hurdle from going to indoor to the sand is that no, it's really close to the thing you're really good at, but it's still pretty far away. So it's like if you took your entire baseball team and you put them on the softball field. Some things are similar, but some things are completely different. And so recognize that even if you're really good inside, you might be bad at beach the first couple of times you try it and that's okay, you'll get better. Um, but really just having some patience with yourself and understanding that they are two very different sports. What advice would you give co college coaches looking to go into indoor beach volleyball and indoor volleyball and in outdoor beach volleyball? Like a transition from indoor to beach? Mm-hmm. The beach volleyball community in college is incredibly helpful. And I would say reach out to people that you may not even know. Uh, we have some great coaches who just really want to grow the game. And they're willing to give advice and call you. Um, the other thing is the ADCA has so much education when it comes to beach volleyball. And it's really a learning process. So you're not going to learn everything right away. I'm still learning, but I think it's really important to um, reach out, talk to some other people who are in that situation. So is it a fully funded program? Is it a crossover program? What does that look like? Um, but we're all really willing to help because Beach will continue to grow and we're excited to welcome new people into it. What advice would you have college coaches looking to become first-time head coaches in beach volleyball or indoor beach or indoor volleyball? I think the biggest thing is you need to have some good mentors that you can call and you can trust. Um, and one of the biggest things would probably be to recruit with character first. So you can train skills, but you can't train good people. And that will solve so many problems, but I think you can also see when people get tempted by a great athlete who maybe doesn't have that, um, an incredibly high character level to back it up. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with Moorhead State's indoor volleyball and beach volleyball? So our... Indoor volleyball is MSU Eagles VB, and then our beach volleyball is MSU Eagles BVB. And then my social media is just Kirsten Becker. Thank you again, Kirsten McBride Becker, for your interview, and best of luck in your future. All right. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sportsock on Facebook at Brandon Sportsock, Instagram at Brandon Sportsock, Twitter at talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sportsock. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Kirsten. Becker for your interview and best of luck in your future. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.